This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. This video is brought to you by First Detachment Nutrition, Battle Tested Nutrition, Expert Formulated Supplements. Use code AB10 at checkout for 10% off. Hey guys, Big Paul here today with another Q&A. I haven't done one of these in a while because my brain was fried from contest prep. I figured you guys would want coherent answers and I was not in a coherent state of mind. That's why I haven't been recording videos as frequently lately. I've been just playing catch up with life, work, etc. after the contest prep. Um, I'll get back to our regular schedule here in the next week or so. Uh, so today we got some good ones lined up. I've got, uh, when clients don't follow the plan, IBS help thoughts on SARMs, my new website design, max doses of certain compounds, thoughts on turkesterone, does fat accumulation at in an insulin site injection site, Opinion on animal-based diets for bodybuilding, things like carnivore. We're going to get into it in just one second. All right, first question here is from John Prather. He says, hey, Paul, I haven't seen you answer any coaching questions. So here's one. Assuming you've dealt with this, how do you handle it when a client who you strongly suspect but can't prove it isn't hitting their marks, doing their diet, cardio, etc., like they say they are? Um, I mean, it happens all the fucking time, dude. Uh, I would say more time, and I'm not trying to bash my clients, but I'd say the people that are 100% compliant are rare. Um, almost nobody's 100% compliant. Hell, I'm I'm pretty damn good. Um, I'm probably a coach's dream, and there are times that I'm not 100% compliant, but I, I get pretty fucking close. On, con on contest prep, I don't fuck around. Um, I, I am on point on contest prep. I don't expect people to be perfect all the time. I What I do expect is communication and just let me know what's going on. I, I'm not the type of guy that's going to kick people in the ass and motivate them. I, I just, that's just not who I am. You, you got to motivate yourself. I mean, it does frustrate me when people don't listen to me, uh, but I get that life happens. People get sick, yada, yada. And, and I'm pretty flexible with people. I try to make adjustments to accommodate their lifestyle when I'm coaching them. So, you know, I, sometimes I get people who are like, damn, Paul, I can't eat six meals a day or I can only work out four days a week or five days a week. I can't do six days like you. I'll adjust their plan to meet their lifestyle. Now, now I have certain things that are optimal. When I'm working with competitors, I push them a little bit further. But for just general lifestyle and fitness people or somebody who's trying to gain muscle or just lose a little fat, I, I don't get as anal. But like with the competitors, I'll definitely give them a kick in the ass and say, you know, hey, look, dude. If you're serious about getting on the stage, you got to get your shit together. Uh, but for just the general lifestyle people, I, I work around them and try try to you know be a little more flexible. Um, you know there there is a certain way that works best for for competitors, and if you're not doing it, you're not going to get maximum results, and that reflects badly on me um, if I let you get away with it. But for the non-competitors, I'm pretty I'm pretty lenient and pretty flexible. You can still get good results if you are like 90% compliant. You know, you're not going to get the best results, but if you if you can get yourself 85 to 90% there, like if I can just get like, you know, if I get the average Joe that's never followed a structured diet before to get 80%, 90% there with the diet, they're going to have results. They're going to they're going to have positive results. It's better than what they were doing before. For a competitor, that's not good enough. You're not going to look good on stage if you if you're only eighty or ninety percent compliant. It you, you for it's a different beast for competitors. If you're serious about competing, you have to be on point at all times. It's like saying I want to be an NFL player, but then you only practice football three days a week. What kind of what kind of results you're going to get? <laughs> you know, or I I you know my uh, you know I was a musician when I was younger. You know people there's a thing in music in music called 10,000 hours to perfection where you have to rehearse 10,000 hours at least 
before you hit professional level of performance. And it's the same thing in bodybuilding. I mean, you have to live, or physique competitors, you have to live, eat, breathe this shit 24-7 if you're going to have a chance to even win. Even then, you might not win. You know, your genetics might limit you. Um, even if you do everything perfectly, you might not win. But I know for me, like, if I'm going to go out and compete, I'm going to try to do everything as perfectly as I can and then leave nothing to chance. Um, so here's what I say. You know, in summary, if you're just trying to get in shape, you know, there's flexibility. If you're trying to be a competitor, there isn't much flexibility. So don't come to me and say you want to be a competitor, but you're not willing to do the competitor's level of work. It's just not going to happen for you. So, and I will work with people. I, I, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a ball buster when, when it's just regular people. So I will bust your balls if you are a competitor though. All right. I apologize if I slaughter this name. Um, a perv Sharma um, how do you deal with IBS? Um, he said, I've been suffering with it since March and I've lost 10 kilograms. I feel your pain, dude. I have IBS as well. And the only thing I can tell you is you have to be diligent with your diet. If you get off track with your diet, even in the slightest, you're fucked. Um, Every once in a while, I convince myself in that I can eat certain things that I know I can't eat, and then, and then it wrecks me for a week. I, I'm I'm shitting my pants for a week because I went off track and ate something I shouldn't be eating. When I build my diets out for my clients and the diet that I follow myself, it is a FODMAP diet. You can look it up. Uh, my gastroenterologist that I work with uh, recommended this to me several years ago. Um, and you want to eat low FODMAP foods. Uh, FODMAP, really, it's just a rating of foods that cause gut irritation, inflammation, um, and that people have intolerances to. It's a, it's a known list. And low FODMAP foods have a low risk of gut irritation. And there's some surprising things on the FOD that are high FODMAP that you would not think. Things that, that are commonly eaten in this bodybuilding community, dairy, um, broccoli, peppers, garlic, um, you know, these are things that I've eliminated from my diet that, that'll fuck me up, um, whey protein, even though I'm fucking sipping on a protein shake right now, don't beat me up guys, I, I'm, I'm sipping on one cause I'm like everybody else who does because, uh, I'm fucking lazy and I don't have any chicken cooked, uh, but that's a rarity for me, um, you know, so dairy, dairy will definitely fuck, fuck you up, gluten fucks me up. Um, you know, so really my diet is very, very basic. I don't eat a ton of vegetables. It seems like vegetables, most vegetables just destroy my stomach. Spinach and some leafy things like they're okay. Kale, spinach, kale, carrots, shit like that. I can, I can deal with, uh, same thing with some fruits like bananas. Fuck me up. Um, I gotta be real careful with, with, with fruits as well. So my diet is just... I mean, this is kind of lame. It's mostly uh, just meats, rice, uh, you know, and I eat chicken, beef, uh, cod for my meats, um, for my carbs. I mostly eat just potatoes, jasmine, white rice, and some oats. I, I have to be careful with the oats, too. I can only get away with about one serving of those a day or I'm in trouble. Cream of rice, all things that are easy to digest. And if I stick with those things, don't use any crazy seasoning. Stay away from the hot sauces. Uh, coffee is another trigger. Um, I can have a little bit of coffee, but I got to be careful with that. Um, so if I just keep the diet very bland, stick with the low FODMAP foods, um, you'll, you'll notice that the IBS will get better. So low FODMAP foods. I also take um, Omeprozole, um, a proton pump inhibitor seems to help as well. Um, and, you know, I've tried every fucking... Um, Digestive enzyme known to man, and I don't think they make shit all a difference. Um, I think Tucka has helped. It could be just in my head. It seems like Tucka has helped. Um, so, you know, those are my tips for, for dealing with IBS. Just stick to the low FODMAP moves. It's uh, foods. It's mostly just diet. All right. Elmo gave me cancer. That's an interesting username. Uh, he asked, my thoughts on selective androgen receptor modulators, SARMs. Well, I know you guys have probably heard me say it before, but I think most of them are fucking garbage. 
and they are peddled by a bunch of fucking scam artists um, that are just trying to make money on, off of gullible people. They, some of them do work. Some of them are, you know, pretty, you know, pretty strong, but they're not steroid strong. And here's the funny thing. People hear SARM, they think there's some magic because it's a SARM. Guess what? Steroids are SARMs too. They're steroidal SARMs. Primabolin is a SARM. It selectively modulates the androgen receptor. Uh, uh, Nandrolone is a SARM. It selectively modulates the androgen receptor. Equipoise is a SARM. It, man, <laughs> selectively modulates the androgen receptor. So when they engineered these steroids, they, as they progressed and tried to get better and reduce the side effects, they, they, <laughs> So they, they created ones that selectively modulated the androgen receptor for that very reason. So steroids are SARMs that actually work and have a long proven track record of safe human use. So why would you use some garbage bullshit that some dude bro on Instagram is peddling um, versus using the real thing with, you know, th these things are, these things didn't even pass clinical trials. God only knows it could cause you fucking cancer. I've seen dudes absolutely wreck themselves with, with some of the SARMs and, you know, have nasty, awful side effects that are worse than actually taking real gear. I just think they're a waste of time. And I think most of the people that peddle them are sharks um, trying to make money off of gullible young guys who are scared to take steroids or, you know, are afraid of the legal consequences of it, whatever. Uh, but anyway, I, I, I just, I just think, for the most part, they're they're a waste of time. I mean, there's some of them that are okay, but I, I am a proponent of taking the most efficient path from point A to point B, and I do not think that SARMs are that. So Richard William of The Pain asked me, could you tell us about your website slash app membership and how it's being designed and what it would include? Thanks. Um, I'm trying to do something a little bit different than other bodybuilding slash coaches that are in this industry are doing. Um, I'm really, really put, I, I'm an IT guy. Um, my day job, I, I have, you know, a couple decades of, of experience in IT and I always think of things in process and, and, um, design for, for IT. So I am trying to bring a bunch of features and sets that like, I've never, I've never worked with a coach that's done anything like this before. Or like with my coaching program where, where I'm going right now, I have an interactive tracking sheet that I'm starting to use with some of my clients. I haven't rolled it out to all of them, but, uh, you know, um, that's live updated. I'm also using a messaging app to communicate with people rather than doing, uh, instant, or rather than doing um, email check-ins, which is kind of traditional, I'm, I'm transitioning my clients over to that, where they can do either video or or um, or um, voice messages. I am going to integrate a um, community on my website where I'm going to do live Q and A's. Um, that's going to be accessible to you know, live Q and A's. There's going to be forums. Um, that's going to be accessible to all my coaching clients. And I'm also going to open that up to just regular people as well. I haven't come up with a price for it yet, but it's going to be sub $20 a month. I'm trying to make it affordable for everybody um, where we're going to actually have what, you know, it's going to be like these Q and A's on steroids um, where I actually will do like a webinar style uh, thing on uh, zoom or something like that, where you can come on video with me and we can talk about your specific question um and i'm going to take a few people and do that every week it's going to be included in the in the in the membership live q a um and then i'm going to have the forums up where i'll answer questions on there as well which will be accessible to my clients and people that subscribe um i am also going to put together some self-study uh programs so for example if you wanted to just do your kind of own cycle and in and um and diet program, I'm going to put kind of together and how a how to um, on on how to do that. Um, I'm going to have those out, which will be more affordable than one on one coaching. Of course, there's still going to be one on one coaching, which I'm going to have more things that go with that. Um, I'm putting out a free newsletter. I'm going to have some free new free content as well. I'm going to have some training programs and steroid information. That I'm just going to be putting out for free, um, you know, just for people to have. Uh, 
the newsletter as well. I'm going to have a newsletter that I'm working on. Um, the new site is actually up right now. I don't have it, everything fully functional. I just put it up the other day. Um, I'm still building it out, so don't beat me up too bad if, if things aren't there. Uh, the new programs are going to be rolling out over here in the next month or two. I'm, right now, it's just coaching that's available. Um, and I still have the one-on-one -on -one consultations as well. Uh, so, you know, just some other stuff, you know, I'm very OCD and, uh, thorough with things. So I want to make sure I have really, really good stuff. Oh, I'm also going to probably do some live webinar trainings. I'm going to offer those occasionally, like, like deep dives. Like if you want to go like a deep dive into, um, how to build a cycle or a deep dive into nutrition, I'm going to come up with some some um, seminars I want to do that are going to be via Zoom where people can act, interact and ask questions. And, um, and essentially, it's a, it's a live class. And I'm going to try to keep those affordable. Um, probably under $100 uh, would be would be my guess for those and try to keep these things accessible and affordable for people. But all that's going to be rolling out here over the next couple months. You know, my, my the one-on-one the -on -one coaching, obviously, I, I have to charge more for it because it takes up a lot of my time. I really put a lot of time into my clients. Um, and it, it, it is, it is very time consuming. So I'm limiting the amount of people I'm taking on for coaching. Um, and I will be adding these other programs that will give you more group accessibility to my knowledge and, and hopefully help you, um, that are, you know, premium things. And I've got tons of free content here on YouTube. So I get guys that bitch about, you know, me being greedy or whatever. I mean, I got to make a living. Uh, but I got, I think I have more free stuff out on YouTube than anybody else. Most people wouldn't be giving this shit away for free. I mean, pretty much everything you have, you need to be a bodybuilder or to get yourself in shape or, or to build a cycle is right here on my YouTube channel. It just is. You just got to take the time to go through it and parse through it for yourself. But if you want one-on-one -on -one help, I still can do that. I'm still doing the consultation calls and stuff like that as well too. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty much it. Next question from Dan Smith. Do certain compounds max out at certain doses, certain steroids? For example, testosterone at 1,000 milligrams, DECA at 600, Primo at 1,000, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, you know, it really is person-to-person -person dependent, and that's why we stack different compounds. Um, I, You know, I'll give you tests, for example. I like to run tests as high as I can without using an AI. And for me, that is 750 milligrams. Before I had gyno surgery, it was not that high. You know, I could get, I could only get away with about 250, 300. Um, so, you know, and it changed after I had gyno surgery. And, uh, you know, I'm leaner now than what I was when I was younger. So I can get away with higher doses of tests. Some dudes run it up to 1,000, 1,200. I, I get up over a thousand or get up to 1250. I've, I've pushed test up to a gram and a half before, but I end up having lots of prostate issues and I get the test flu. Um, so that's when you throw the second compound in that may not have those same side effects. An example would be primabolin. I have found no upper limit on primabolin. It, primabolin for me is, you know, other than a little bit of elevated blood pressure, Primabolin for me is pretty much side effect free. I, I really feel nothing as far as side effects go when I'm running Primabolin. It will elevate my blood pressure just a tad. Um, Trembolone, I certainly found out that I have a very low tolerance for Trembolone. Um, I ran it at 150 milligrams uh, a week this year on contest prep and I still had side effects. I still had night sweats and some insomnia, although it was more tolerable. And I think my max dose on Trembolone is somewhere around 300 milligrams. That's about the max I can go. Um, Equipoise is another one I've run really, really high doses of before, and I found no upper limit on Equipoise. I'm sure there is one. I have not pushed it that high. Nandrolone, I pushed it up to 1,000 milligrams before. That's about my limit on Nandrolone, maybe even less than that. I don't run it that high anymore. Maybe 600 at the at a max. Um and then orals, you know, it's just what your liver can tolerate. And for me, I have a very, very low tolerance for orals. I, I really can't, my total oral load can't be more than 50 or 75 milligrams per day. That's it. And then I start having liver issues. So it really varies from person to person and from compound to compound. I've seen wide, 
wide variances in especially in my clients that you know some dudes that can you know take a gram of fucking uh trend and they say they feel nothing which blows my mind are they full of shit i don't know but i mean everybody is different and then me like 150 milligrams a week and i you know and i got insomnia and night sweats so it really varies so salt lightning asks what are my thoughts on terkesterone and, and ectosteroids I'm bringing it up because it's a hot topic right now. Well, the, they go in the same category as SARMs. They are a bunch of bullshit peddled by scam artists. I don't know. I mean, Turkesterone has some science behind it. I, I shouldn't say scam artists. You know, there's some legit dudes that sell it, but um, they aren't passing it off as being something. As long as people aren't passing it off as being something better than real steroids, I, I'm fine with it, but... I mean, it has some effect, but it doesn't have a lot of an effect. I have personally never used Turkesterone, so I can't give you an honest opinion on it. I have fucked around with SARMs before and found them to be absolutely useless and expensive and a waste of time. Um, I, you know, once again, I repeat what I said earlier. I am a proponent of taking the most efficient path from point A to point B. And for me, that is using anabolics with a proven track record of success not some bullshit supplement or SARM that doesn't have that, that sort of t track record. I mean, Turkesterone looks good on paper in practicality. I don't think anybody's stepping on the Olympia stage taking a Turkesterone cycle. Just saying. James Orlando asks, does insulin injection cause fat accumulation around the injection sites? That is a good question. Um, I believe if you look at the warning packages uh, for insulin, it actually tells you to rotate sites because of lipodystrophy. Um, growth hormone will do that too. I've heard of growth hormone actually making fat shrink in spots. So, um, you know, I, I've, I've used insulin for a while. I have not noticed it, but I also stay pretty lean. And I do rotate my sites from side to side. Um, I usually do it in my, um, like, like down my obliques in that area. Um, you know, so I, I definitely would rotate sites. Um, I, I have, like, I haven't seen any great fat accumulation, um, in those sites, but they, they, they say it's possible. Um, you know, it's, it is, I believe it is in the warning package that comes with the, with the insulin pens when you open up the box. I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's on the, on the sheet, the information sheet that goes with it. So just to be safe, rotate the sites. Um, I that that that's my two cents, and that's what it recommends in the uh, in the instructions. All right, Michael Carter asks. It's the final question. What is your opinion on animal-based diets, things like carnivore or paleo, etc., uh, for bodybuilding? Um, I don't know. They're just it's just another fad diet. For for some reason, a lot of these fad diets that came around were were Let's remove an entire macro group from our from our diet, and we'll call it a miracle. You know, let's remove fats. Let's remove let's remove protein. You know, let let's remove uh, carbs from our diet, and that is the miracle for health and fat loss. Um, for for you know, if you want to if you want to do carnivore for your own fun, whatever, go, go the fuck, right the fuck for it. I'm sure you'll lose weight. Um, just because you, by in eliminating an entire macro group, you're cutting your calories more than likely. Uh, if you're not eating carbs anymore, uh, but for bodybuilding, it's suboptimal, uh, for bodybuilding, we want to optimize our performance in the gym. We want to optimize our physique. And in order to do that, carbohydrates are necessary. And removing carbohydrates from our diet is probably dumb for physique performance. You can't have a full round physique without carbohydrates. Um, and you uh, are going to have shitty workouts if you don't have carbohydrates in there to get the pump in. So glycogen is the primary fuel source when you're um, lift, lifting weights. So I don't know. I it, it's To me, it seems suboptimal and unnecessary for bodybuilding for if you're just doing whatever you know if you're a crossfit guy and you just want to be fit 
and you just want to eat ribeyes all day long, then by, by all means, go for it. I, there, to me, it's silly for bodybuilding, and it doesn't work. I, th I think this has been proven over and over and over again. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Uh, check out my sponsors, if you don't mind. Uh, uh, First Attachment Nutrition, they are who I use for all my supplements. I have a 10% discount code with them with AB10. And I'm also now working with Evolve Telemed for um, HRT, uh, men's sexual wellness and uh, for hair loss they also do blood work i have a 25 dollars off coupon there as well it's in the um, video description below ab25 all right guys thanks for watching my video catch you next week for coaching or consultations head over to www.anabolicbodybuilding.com to book your spot today i can help you with optimizing hormones fat loss muscle gain physique athletic performance, nutrition, and health. For more information, shoot me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com.